Uh, so our gospel reading today kind of gave away what the feast day is. Uh, it's the Jewish feast of tabernacles, also known as the Feast of Booths, B-O-O-T-H-S. Um, so this is going to be the feast for a couple days, tomorrow um, and then Wednesday and Thursday, I believe. We're going to actually have a little break Monday and Tuesday. Monday is going to be this mysterious reading of the woman called in adultery at the beginning of chapter 8. I'll explain more on that. Well, Father Kuna will. Uh, and then Tuesday is the f- feast of St. Joseph. So all you Joes out there, your feast day is coming up. Okay. So um, the church gives us in today's gospel reading, beginning of chapter 7, verses 1 and 2, then skips 3 through 9, gives us 10, and then skips 11 to 24 and gives us 25 to 30. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me just break it down uh, quickly here. First of all, the Feast of Tabernacles was meant to be a joyful feast. Just like Thanksgiving's meant to be a joyful feast too until you and your family start talking politics and then all of a sudden now everyone's arguing with each other. So this is supposed to be a joyful feast, but yet there's a lot of, a lot of arguing and accusing going on here uh, in John chapter 7. The feast day is meant to what? Commemorate God's providential care. That's the purpose of the feast day. So there's two components to it. There was the component of uh, um, the fall festival, uh, the harvest. Okay, so this, this feast day occurs in the fall at the end of the year. So they're celebrating the fruits of their labor. They're celebrating the harvest time. Okay, so God's care there. But then in scripture, the other component is God's care for them in the wilderness. So the time of Moses leading them from, from Egypt to Israel. Okay, God's care there. All right. So that care, what did God do? How did God provide for them in the wilderness? Well, uh, water, okay, water from the rock. So water is a big con- component of this feast day. I won't get into much of it today. Fire, another component. How did God guide the people through the wilderness at night? That pillar of fire, okay? So Feast of Tabernacles, celebration with water, celebration with fire. And the people would live in booths, okay? Little tents, tabernacles, all right? Um, just like the Israelites did in the wilderness. There's also a lot of sacrifices, 70 to be exact. Day one, there was 13 bull sacrifices, 12 the next day, 11, all the way to the end of the week, where there was, on day seven, there were seven. Add those numbers up, you get the number 70, was meant to be a symbol of what the Gentile nations. So this feast day is also a celebration of God's incorporation of the Gentiles okay, into the fold. And then lastly, and I'm going to bring this up because I think this is the context of today's gospel passage. There also was the reading of the law, which I believe happened midway through the festival. We don't get it here. The church omits it in today's gospel reading, but it tells us that halfway through the festival, Jesus begins to teach. And the people start complaining, and this is where we get this idea that the the, the end of the gospel passage today, they're complaining about Jesus' identity. Well, it starts off in the portion that's omitted. Jesus is teaching. The people are confused because they know he's not trained by anyone. So they say, where does he get all this? They're profound. They're struck by the profoundness of his teaching, but... He hasn't been trained by any special rabbi, Pharisee. Where did he get all this? And then our Lord goes into, I got it from the Father, whom you do not know. Which then leads, again, rest into this kind of confrontation. They want to crucify, you know, they want to arrest him. They want to put him to death. Um, You know, all these things, they're upset. But once again, just like in John chapter 5, Jesus is identifying himself with God the Father, that he is the beloved son of the Father. And again, that all comes about 
because of the wisdom that he, is, that he has given to them. A very unknown wisdom that they're not familiar with. You know, and that's... God's constantly, through the Spirit, given us that wisdom. We as Christians, we're meant to see the world differently than others. You know, just like Christ's teaching, just the way he viewed God and, and his relationship with us, it's different than even what the religious leaders understood it to be. Again, from like the last three days, they're so hung up on not doing anything on the Sabbath, and here Jesus has given life to the man on the Sabbath, which also comes up in this discussion, but not mentioned in today's gospel. But we are different, and we're made to be different the more that we're incorporated with Christ. May God bless you.